Welcome! This video defines the key components of a data network and demonstrates how data communication takes place over a network. In order for us to send messages from one location to another, whether it's an instant message or an email, we rely on the web of interconnected networks. These data networks vary in size and capabilities, but all networks have a few basic elements in common. They all have common rules that determine how messages are sent, directed, received, and interpreted. They all have messages or units of information that travel from one device to another, and they all have a way of interconnecting these devices. This diagram shows the basic elements of a typical network, including devices, mediums tied together by rules that work together to send messages. We use messages as a term that represents web pages, email, instant message, telephone calls, and all other forms of communication enabled by the Internet. You will learn about each of these elements individually as you continue your studies, but for now you should understand that every network must have these four common elements to function. When describing or planning networks, network engineers draw diagrams using icons. These icons are used to represent devices in a network and to indicate how these devices are connected. Note the icons representing some common end devices which originate messages and receive messages. These include desktop computers, laptops, servers, and IP phones. On local area networks or LANs, these devices are connected using wired or wireless connections. This graphic also shows some of the most common intermediate devices that are used to direct messages and manage messages as they move through the network. Some common intermediary devices include a LAN switch, which is the most common device for interconnecting local networks, a firewall, which provides security to networks, routers and wireless routers, which are devices used to direct messages as they travel across the network, a cloud is used to summarize a group of networking devices, and a serial link, which represents wide area networks or WAN interconnections between two local area networks. It's important to understand the basic symbols of a network because they're used frequently to illustrate and teach us about data networks. The devices in a network must be connected for the network to function. Network connections can be wired or wireless. With wired connections, like the network in this graphic, the medium is either copper, which carries electrical signals, or optical fiber, which carries light signals. Copper media includes cables, such as twisted pair telephone wire, coaxial cable, and most commonly what is known as Category 5 Unshielded Twisted Pair, or Cat5 UTP cable. Optical fibers, which are thin strands of glass or plastic that carry light signals, are another form of wired networking media. In wireless connections, the medium is the Earth's atmosphere, or space, and the signals are sent as radio waves. Wireless media may include many types of connections, from the home wireless connection between a wireless router and a laptop, to the communication between devices on Earth and satellites. In a typical journey across the Internet, a message may travel across a variety of media, so it's important for us to have a knowledge of the capabilities and restrictions of each medium. Besides having devices and connections, a network must also have rules or protocols to dictate how messages are transmitted. To understand the protocols that allow networks to function, we can examine how we communicate as humans. To accomplish this, we establish rules or agreements to carry out a conversation. These rules or protocols must be followed to make sure our messages are successfully delivered and understood. This graphic includes an identified sender and receiver, a man and a woman, an agreed-upon method of communicating, which is speaking, a common language, in this case English, and acknowledgments, the replies of yes. As we see, the man places an order, the woman acknowledges the man's request, and then the man verifies that the woman is correct. Without these acknowledgments, neither the man nor the woman would be certain that the other person received their message correctly. Our human communication protocols are comparable to the protocols used in network communications. Data networks must have a sender and a receiver, agreed upon transmission method, a common language, and acknowledgments to ensure that messages are being sent successfully. You will study network protocols in more depth later, but for now understand that network protocols are very comparable to the human communication rules we use every day. 
This overview of data network components can help serve as a basis for a deeper understanding of networking. You have observed that data networks and human networks use similar models to ensure communication from source to destination accurately and in a timely manner. Also recall the symbols used to represent devices and other network components. These will enable you to interpret network diagrams and illustrations as your understanding of networking grows.